and welcome back to my channel. It's Ashley here, and if you are new, hey girl, hey. So in this video today, I'm just gonna be sharing how you can repaint a piece of furniture without having to strip everything off. So let's talk about this piece really quick. So I got this piece three years ago. I got it when I was pregnant with Riley and we put it in her nursery. So this is when I first kind of started painting furniture. So I really didn't know what I was doing and I got some chalk paints, which this is Annie Salone chalk paint. And of course they always are like, oh no prep, blah, 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 just paint. And that's exactly what I did. And six months into having this, the would not started to come through. So in this video today, I'm going to be sharing how I repainted this the correct way so that this will not happen again. So the first thing I did was I removed the hardware and this is the original hardware that was on the piece and I'm pretty sure that I spray painted these um, handles with like a gold spray paint. So although this is my piece and I know it's not extremely dirty, I'm still going to be cleaning this like I normally do all of my pieces. And I'm just using like crud cutters and I am cleaning the insides and just all around. The thing I did was I just removed all of the drawers from the dresser and then I wiggled all of the drawer tracks just to make sure that they were nice and tight and if they weren't, I just took my drill and I tightened them. Next, I just took a drop cloth, put that on my floor so I can get ready to start working on this piece. The next thing that I did was I started to sand. So honestly, I should have used my other um, sander and put the shop vac on it so that I wouldn't have all of this chalk dust flying everywhere but I didn't do that and I did have the windows up and I covered up some of the stuff in her room um, but I did have like dust all over the place but anyways so now I'm just kind of just sanding this smooth just sanding it out because it had a little bit of a rough areas on there um, so I sanded the sides I sanded the front and of course I sanded the top a little bit and I did not sand it to where I have to like sand all of the paint off I did not do that at all I just literally smoothed out that paint so that I'll be able to paint on top of it. So one thing I do want to mention though is that if this is a piece that you have painted and you already know like how much paint you put on there and that it's not caked on there, then you can definitely, it'd just be easy for you to kind of repaint your piece. But if it's a piece that you're getting from someone and maybe they painted it or something like that and you don't know how thick it is on there, you can always just strip a piece off to see how thick it is or just sand that area a little bit to see if you need to take everything off. Um, because if not, you can literally just sand it, which I've done that before with the piece I've had you just sand some of the areas smooth um, get it nice and ready to paint and then you can just paint over it now again if it's a bad paint job you're gonna need to strip all of it off but if it's not and you can just you know lightly sand away some of those areas just go ahead and do that and then you'll be literally ready to paint so after I was finished with the body of the piece I came and I started to work on the drawers doing that same exact thing and then there were some dings on this um, on the drawers so I'm just taking some putty and I'm putting those areas up and then I'm gonna come back in of course lightly sand over those okay so now I have my piece nice and sanded smooth and I have puttied up the areas that needed to be puttied up next I'm gonna start working on those wood knots okay so because this piece does have wood knots I'm gonna have to seal them with this shellac so I am going to be taking the shellac and I'm gonna be placing them on the wood knots that I can see so this is, I always take extra precautions with wood knots now, ever since this happened to me. <laughs> so I always take extra steps. So I put the clear shellac on first, and then after I do that, I come back in with the shellac base primer, which I always forget this is so watery, so be careful when you're pouring it out. And then I am going to add that on next. So I added this to the whole piece, so the top, the sides, um, the drawers, and you know, of course, the front as well. I just wanna make sure this piece has some nice protection because I do not want those wood knots coming through again. I was so devastated when that happened. And it's because I did not know. So if you do have a piece that does have wood knots, keep in mind that you're going to need to seal those. And you can do that by simply just adding the clear shellac or you can go ahead and use the shellac base primer to seal that as well. And I just want to say, guys, if you do use chalk paint, because I know a lot of people 
people are always like, oh, I can use chalk paint because it's so easy to use. You use just less prep and all that stuff. It is less prep, but that depends on the piece that you're working on. So just keep that in mind. If your piece does have wood knots, regardless of if you're using chalk paint or not, you're gonna need to take those extra steps. It's better to be safe than sorry because tanning can really happen with any type of cedar, redwood, oak especially this is an oak dresser so this had the wood knots i had the bleed through so you just want to keep those things in mind when you are painting your furniture regardless of if you're using chalk paint or anything like that you want to take those extra steps so you will not be sorry later down the line especially if you are using a lighter colored paint it is going to come through. All right, so moving along. So after I was done with priming, the next thing I did was I just lightly sanded this. And as you can see, there was not as much dust flying around as it was with that chalk paint. So now comes the fun part, of course, which is actually painting this dresser the color that it's going to be. So the color that I'm using is this really, really pretty pink. I'm pretty sure this is Sherwin-Williams. I'll have um, the paint color and information down below. So when you start to put this on, it is like a light pink, but then when it starts to dry, it becomes like this really dark, pretty pink color, and I absolutely love it. So sticking with the rolling method, I am rolling my paint onto the dresser and I also switched in between with my zebra brushes and stuff to get um, in the trim areas and edges and corners and things like that too. Fun fact about this dresser, so I was pregnant, like literally pregnant, pregnant, about to pop pregnant, and this was in July, and I was really trying to get this done, and y'all, I finished the dresser, but then like the next day, when I was gonna come back and like finish everything up, your girl went into labor, so I never finished this, and I had to stop, and of course, it was weeks before I came back to this, so in this next segment that we go to, I will no longer be pregnant, and we will be finishing the dresser. <laughs> All right, so now here we go, the next segment. This is weeks later after I have given birth <laughs> and I am now continuing to work on this dresser. So the first thing that I did is I started to work on the door part. So I'm just removing the um, hardware on there and then I'm gonna be placing that to the side because I am going to spray paint that. So for this door, I flipped it over to the front and I am going to be taping it to create stripes. So the tape I used is I used both frog tape and then I used the scotch tape. And the scotch tape that I used is just like the frog tape where like the paint doesn't come through the tape. So I'm doing various size lines and I am just taping up the door. So after I taped the front of the door, I'm now gonna paint it. So the paint is the same paint color. I just lightened it up a little, lightened it up a little bit using white, and then I painted that on there. After that, I removed the tape, I flipped this over, and then I painted it that same light pink color on the inside. And as I said, after I got the door painted, I came out and I spray painted the hardware a very pretty gold color to match the knobs that I purchased. So the next thing I did was I added some fabric to the drawer sides. So I have a full video that shows you how to add fabric to your drawer sides. So I will have that linked in the cards up here and also down below if you wanna check it out. I'm not gonna talk about how I did this on this video cause I literally have a full video on how I did it. But I did add this really pretty um, fabric that I got from Joann's to the sides of the drawer. And the last thing I did was I just started to paint up like this little trimmy area where the smaller drawers come back in to this area so when you pull them out you can kind of still see it so I wanted to kind of paint it so it wouldn't be just that white color so I'm adding that and that's the last thing I did of course besides um, sealing this which I used a satin polycrylic to do that all right and that is it finally the reveal this is my favorite 
part of any video that I do when I'm doing a furniture makeover. So I love how this dresser turned out. It looks perfect in Riley's room. So this is just an all around fun dresser. From the pattern that I put in the front to this gorgeous hardware, which I got from Hobby Lobby, y'all. I'm obsessed with this hardware. I absolutely love it. And another thing that's a favorite of mine besides this hardware is when you open up the door and you have that nice light pink, which I think is a nice little subtle pop that this dresser needed too. Also that little brown part that keeps the door locked, I actually um, spray painted that gold too because that brown was not working. Um, and the drawer sides, again, love them because they match her whole room theme, which as you can see, she has these animals with these floral crowns. So as I was filming this, I actually did notice that I had some places where I needed to touch up some areas, so I will be doing that. But all in all, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And you also see now that you don't have to do a lot of stripping and all that stuff just to repaint a piece of furniture. Just make sure that you check it out first before you actually get started. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below to let me know what you think. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button and you hit that notification bell so you'll always be up to date with my latest tutorials and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!